when the Achiever brings home full numbers. I hear that Don Pedro has bestowed much honor on young Claudio. Oh, and much deserved on his part, and equally remembered by Don Pedro. He has borne himself beyond the promise of his age, doing in the figure of a land a feat of a lion. He hath indeed better, better expectation than you must expect me to take power. Oh, he hath an uncle here in Messina that will be very much glad of it. I have already delivered him letters, and there appears much joy in him, even so much that joy cannot show itself modest enough without a badge of bitterness. Oh, did he break out into tears? Oh, in great measure. <laughs> a kind overflow of kindness. There are no faces truer than those that are so washed, are there, Beatrice? How much better is it to weep at joy than joy at weeping? I pray you, is Signor Montanto returned from the wars or no? I know none of that name, lady. There was none such in a game of any sort. What is he that you ask for, niece? <coughs> My cousin means Signor Benedict. Oh, well, he's returned in pleasant as ever he was. <laughs> he set up his bills here in Messina and challenged Cupid at the flight. And my uncle's fool, reading the challenge, subscribed for Cupid and challenged him at the bird bolt. I pray you, how many hath he killed and eaten in these wars? But how many hath he killed? For indeed, I promise to eat all his killing. Faith, niece, you tax Signor Benedict too much, but he'll be even with you, I doubt it not. He hath done good service lately in these games. Oh, he's a valiant trencherman. He hath an excellent stomach. And a good soldier, too, lady. And a good soldier to a lady, but what is he to a lord? A lord to a lord, a man to a man, stuffed with all honorable virtues. It is so indeed. He is no less than a stuffed man, but for the stuffing. Well, we are all more <laughs> You must not, ma'am, mistake my niece. There exists a kind of merry war between Signor Benedict and her. They never meet, but there's a skirmish of wit between them. Alas, he gets nothing by that. In our last conflict, four of his five wits went halting off, so now is the whole man governed with one. So that he have wit enough to keep himself warm in the winter, let him bear it for a difference between himself and his horse. For it's all the wealth he hath left to be known a reasonable creature. Who's his companion now? He hath every month the new sworn brother. It's possible. Very easily possible. He wears his faith, but as the fashion of his cap, ever changing with the next law. I see, lady, the gentleman is not in your books. No, if he were, I would burn my study. But who is his companion now? Is there no young square ready to make a voyage with him to the devil? He's at most in the company of the right noble God. Oh, Lord, he will hang upon him like a disease. He's sooner caught than the pestilence, and the taker arrives presently mad. God help the noble Claudio, if he hath got the Benedict, it will cost a thousand pounds to be cured. 
Oh, you will never run mad, will you, niece? No, not till a hot January. Don Pedro is approached. All right, guys, let's put your hands together and give it up for the board. remains, but when you depart, sorrowness abides. You embrace your charge too willingly. <laughs> Think this is your daughter. Oh, her mother hath many times told me so. Were you in doubt, sir, that you had so? <laughs> Senior Benedict, no, for then you were a child. You have it full, Benedict. We may guess by this what you are, being a man. Truly, the lady fathers herself. Be happy, lady, for you are like an honorable father. If Signor Leonardo be her father, she would not have his head on her shoulders for all Messina, as like him as she is. Will you always be talking, Signor Benedict? Nobody marks you. What, my dear lady, disdain? You yet living? Is it possible disdain should die while she has such meat food to feed it as Signor Benedict? <laughs> courtesy itself must convert to disdain if you come in her presence. Then is courtesy a turncoat. But it is certain I am loved of all ladies, only you accepted. But I would I could find it in my heart that I had not a hard heart, for truly I love none. A dear happiness to women, else they would have been troubled with a pernicious suitor. Oh. I thank God in my cold heart I am of your humor for that. I'd rather hear a dog bark at a crow than a man swear he loves me. God, keep your ladyship still in that mind, so some gentleman or other shall escape a predestinate scratched face. Ooh. Scratching could not make it worse for a face such as yours. Then <laughs> you are a rare parent teacher. A bird of my tongue's better than a beast of yours. Would my car on the speed of your tongue be so good a continuer? <laughs> I don't care. But keep your way in God's name, I have done. You end with a jade's trick, I know you Well met, this battle of wits set it in. Now be, get along. <laughs> Benedict, yeah. didst thou know the daughter of Signor Leonardo? I noted her not, but I looked on her. She not a modest young lady. You question me as an honest man should do for my simple true judgment, or would you have me speak after my custom as being a professed tyrant to their sex? No, oh, I pray thee, speak in sober judgment. Why in fact me think she's too low for a high praise, too brown for a fair praise, and too little for a great praise. Only by this commendation I can afford her. Were she other than she is, she weren't handsome. And being no other but as she is, I do not like her. Thou thinkest I am in sport. I pray thee, tell me truly how thou likest her. Would you buy her that you inquire after her? Can the world buy such a jewel? Yea, in the case to put it into. But speak you this seriously. In mine eye, she is the sweetest lady that ever I looked on. Uh, is it come to this? Hath not the world one man who will wear his cap with suspicion? Shall I never see a bachelor of three score again? Go then, thrust thy neck into a yoke, wear the print of it, and sigh away so nice. What secret the bell do you hear that you fall not to Leonardo's? I would, your grace. Constrain me to tell. Charge the other allegiance. You hear, Count Claudio. I can be as secret as a dumb man. But on my allegiance, mark you this, on my allegiance, he is in love. <laughs> With who? Now that is your grace's part. Mark how short his answer is. With hero, Leonardo's short daughter. Ow! This were so, so were it uttered. It is like the old tale, my lord. It is not so. To what is it so? But indeed, God forbid it should be so. <laughs> if my passion change not shortly, God forbid it should be otherwise. Amen. If you love her, for she is very well worthy. You speak this to fetch me in, my lord. By my troth, I speak my thoughts. And in faith, Lord, I spoke mine. And by my two fates and troths, my Lord, I spoke mine. <laughs> that I love her, I feel. Oh, that she is worthy, I know. <laughs> that I neither feel how she should be loved, nor know how she should be worthy, as the opinion fire cannot melt out of me. I will die in it at the stake. That a woman conceive me, 
I thank her that she brought me up. I likewise give her my most humble thanks. But that I will hang my bugle in an invisible baldric, all women shall pardon me. Because I will not do them the wrong to mistrust any. I will do myself the right to trust none. And the finest for which I may go the finer, I will live a bachelor. <laughs> I, I shall see thee before I die look pale with love. In time, even the savage bull doth bear the yoke. The savage bull may. But, if ever the sensible Benedict bear it, pluck off the bull's horns and set them in my forehead, let me be vilely painted, and here in such great letters as they write, here is good horse to hire, let them signify under my sign. Here, you may see Benedict the married man. <laughs> if this should ever happen, Thou wouldst be horn mad. Nay, if Cupid have not smelled all his quiver in Venice, thou wilt quake for this shortly. Oh, I look for an earthquake too, then. Stop, my liege. Your Highness now may do me some good. Have Leonardo any song? No child but hero. She's his only heir. Dost thou affect her, Claudio? Oh, my lord, when you went onward on this ended action, I looked on her with a soldier's eye that liked, but had a rougher task in hand than to drive liking to the name of love. But now I am returned, and since war thoughts have left their places vacant, in their rooms come thronging, soft and delicate desires, all prompting me how fair young hero is, saying I liked her ere I went to wars. Thou will be like a lover presently, and uh, tire the hearer with a book of words. If thou dost love fair hero, <coughs> cherish it. Thou wilt talk with her and with her father, and thou shalt have her. Was not to this end that thou began to twist so fine a story? Oh, how sweetly you do minister to love that no love's grief by his complexion. But uh, lest my liking might too sudden seem, I, I would have salved it with a longer treatise. What need the bridge much broader than the flood? The fairest grain is the necessity. In short, thou lovest. And I will fit thee with thy remedy. I know we shall have reveling tonight, and I will assume thy part, some disguise, and tell the fair hero that I am Claudio. And in her bosom, I'll unclasp my heart and take her hearing prisoner with the force and strong encounter of my amorous tale. Then, over to her father will I bring. And the conclusion is, she shall be thine. In practice, let's put it reveling. music? He is very busy about it. <laughs> but brother, I can tell you strange news which you yet dreamt not of. Is it good? As the event stamps them. But they have a good cover. They show well outward. The prince and Count Claudio were thus much overheard by an aide of mine. The prince discovered to Count Claudio that he loved your <laughs> daughter <laughs> and meant to acknowledge it this night in a dance. And if he found her accordant, he meant to take the present time by the top and instantly break with you of it. Well, half the fellow any wit that told you this. A good sharp fellow. I will send for him and question him yourself. Oh, no, no, no. We will hold this as a dream until it appear true. But I will acquaint my daughter with all so she know the answer. Come, let us presently. <laughs> My lord, 
Why are you thus out of measure sad, yo? There is no measure in the occasion that breeds, therefore the sadness is without limit. Well, you should hear reason, my lord. And when I have heard it, what blessing brings it? Well, if not a patient sufferance, then at least the present remedy. I cannot decide <laughs> what I am. I must be sad when I have cause and smile at no man's jest. Eat when I have stomach and wait for no man's leisure. Sleep when I am drowsy and tend on no man's business. Laugh when I am merry and call no man in his humor. Yea, but you must not make the full show of this till you may do it without control, my lord. You have a late set out against your brother, yo, and he had taken you newly into his grace, where it should be that you were great lady. But I am a plain dealing villain. I am trusted with a muzzle and enfranchised with a clog. Therefore, I have decreed not to sing in my cage. If I had my mouth, I would bite. If I had my liberty, I would do my liking. In the meantime, let me be that I am and seek not to alter me. Can you make no use of your discontent, my lady? I make full use of it, for I use it only. What news, Baraccio? I came yonder from a great supper. The prince, your brother, royally entertained by Leonardo, and I can give you intelligence of an intended marriage. Well, it's your funny model to help mischief on. <laughs> Marry on his your brother's right hand. <laughs> Ooh, the most exquisite Claudio. Even he. Ugh. And who? And who? Which way looks he? Mary on Hero, the daughter and heir of Leonato. Oh, for a very forward march, chick. How came you to this? Being entertained for a perfumer's house. Token in a musty room. Comes me the Prince and Claudio, hand in hand at sad conference. So I hid behind the heirs, and there, heard it agreed upon that the Prince should woo Hero for himself. And having obtained her, give her to Count Claudio. Come, come, let us thither. This may prove food to my displeasure. That young startup hath all the glory of my overthrow. If I can cross him any way, I bless myself every way. <laughs> Blessing, I am at my knees, 
Every morning and evening, Lord, I cannot endure a husband with a beard on his face. I'd rather lie in the woman. He <laughs> lies on a husband with no beard. Ah! And what should I do with him? Dress him in my apparel and make him my waiting gentlewoman? <laughs> he that hath a beard is more than a youth, and he that hath no beard is less than a man. And he that is more than a youth is not for me. And he that is less than a man, I am not for him. Well then, go you into hell. No, but to the gate where the devil will meet me like an old couple with horns on his head and say, Get you to heaven, Beatrice! Get you to heaven! Here's no place for you maids! Well, niece, I trust you will be ruled by your father. Yes, it is my cousin's duty to make curtsy and say, Father, as it please you. But yet for all that, cousin, let him be a handsome fellow, or make another curtsy and say, Father, as it please me. Oh. <laughs> Niece, I hope to see you one day fitted with a husband. Not till God make men out of some other metal than earth. Would it not grieve a woman to be overmastered with a piece of valiant dust? To make an account of her life to a clod of wayward moral? No, uncle, I'll not. Adam's sons are my brethren, and truly I hope the same to match in my kindred. Well, daughter, you know my mind. If the prince do solicit you, you know your answer. Well, it's time for this. <laughs> against whose charms fate melteth into blood. This is an accident of hourly proof which I mistrusted not. Farewell, therefore, hero. Oh, 
my lady Beatrice should know me and not know me. The princess who? Ha! And maybe I go under that title because I am Mary. But Jay, I am so apt to do myself wrong. I'm not so reputed. It is the base so bitter disposition of Beatrice that puts the world into her person and so gives me out. Well, I'll be revenged as I may. The lady Beatrice hath a quarrel to you. The gentleman she danced with told me she is much, much wronged by you. Oh, she misused me past the endurance of a block. I know, but with one green leaf on it would have answered her. My very visor began to assume life and scold with her. She said, not thinking that I had been myself, that I was the princess jester, that I was duller than a great ball, huddling jest upon jest with such impossible conveyance upon me, that I stood like a man at a mark, with a whole army shooting at me. She speaks poignards, and every word stabs if her breath were as terrible as her terminations, there would be no living near her. She would infect to the North Star. I would not marry her, though she were endowed with all that Adam had left him before he transgressed. <laughs> Look, here she comes. <laughs> Your grace can any service to the world's end. I will go now on the slightest errand to the antiquities you can devise to send me. I'll fetch you a toothpicker from the furthest inch of Asia. <laughs> Bring you with the length of Prester John's foot. I'll fetch you a hair off the great champ's beard to you any ambassador to the pygmies rather than hold three words of conference with this harpy. <laughs> no employment for me. None but to desire your good company. Oh, God, here's a dish I love, Matt. I cannot endure my lady tongue. Come, lady, come. You have lost the heart of Signor Benedict. Indeed I have, my lord. He lent me once, and I gave him use for it. It's a double heart for a single one. Mary, once before, he wanted a me in a false dice game. Therefore, your grace may well say I have lost it. You have put him down, lady. You have put him down. So it would not he should do me, my lord, lest I prove the mother of fools. How now, Count? You look sad. How now, Count? Wherefore art thou sad? Not sad, my lord. How then, sick? Neither, my lord. The Count is neither sad, nor sick, nor merry, nor well. But a civil cow, civil as an orange, and somewhat of that jealous complexion. My faith, lady, I think your blaze to be true. Though, I'll be sworn, if he be so, his conceit is false. Here, Claudio, I have wounded thy name, and the fair hero is one. I have broke with her father, and his good will obtain. Now, then the day of marriage, and God give thee joy. Count. Take of me my daughter, and with her all my fortunes. His grace has made the match, but all grace say amen to it. <clears throat> Speak, Count, tis your cue. <laughs> Silence is the perfectest herald of joy. I were but little happy if I could say how much. Lady, as I am yours, you are mine. I give away myself for you, and dote upon the exchange. <laughs> speak, cousin! Or if you cannot, stop his mouth with a kiss and let him not speak not. And <laughs> <laughs> faith, lady, you have a merry heart. Mm, I think it for a fool. If it keeps on the windy side of care. <laughs> My cousin tells him in his ear that he's in her heart. Oh, so she doth, cousin. Good Lord for alliance. Thus goes everyone to the world but I, and I am sunburned and sit in a corner and cry hi-ho for a husband. Lady Beatrice, I will get you one. I'd rather have one of your father's getting. Dost thou graze ne'er have a brother like you? Your father got excellent husbands if a maid could come by them. You have me, lady. <laughs> Now this I might have another for working days. Your grace is too costly to wear every day. <laughs> oh, I beseech your grace. Pardon, I was born to speak all mirth and no matter. Your silence most offends me, but to me Mary best becomes you. There's no question, you were born in a merry hour. <laughs> No faith, my lord, my mother cried. But then there was a star danced, and under that I was born. 
cousins, God give you joy. Niece, will you not look to those things I told you of? Oh, oh I think you'll grease. I'm not sure. No. It wasn't spirited, lady. Oh, well, there's little of the melancholy element in her, my lord. She is never sad, but for when she sleeps, and even then she is not truly sad, for my daughter has told me many times that she has dreamt of unhappiness and awaked herself with laughing. She cannot endure to hear tell of a husband. Oh, no, my lord. She mocks all wooers out of suit. She were an excellent wife for Benedict. <laughs> Oh, my lord, they would talk themselves mad if they were but married a week. Now, Claudio, when mean you go to church? Oh, tomorrow, my lord. Time goes on crutches till love have all his rights. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Not till Monday, my dear son, which is just a brief seven night and uh, too short a time to answer all things in my mind. Oh, come now, Claudia, you shake the head at so long of breathing. But I warrant thee, the time shall not go duly by us. I will in the interim undertake one of Hercules' labors, which is to bring the Lady Beatrice and Signor Benedict into a mountain of affection, the one with the other. Uh, I would fain have it a match, and doubt not but to fashion it, if you three will but minister such assistance as I shall give you direction. Oh. Well, my lord, I am for you, even if it costs me ten nights watching. As am I. And you too, gentle hero? I will do any modest office to help my cousin to a good husband. Oh, that's my girl. And Benedict is not the unhopefulest husband that I know. Thus far can I praise him. He is of a noble strain of approved valor and confirmed honesty. I will teach you how to humor your cousin so that she fall in love with Benedict, and I, with your two helps, well, so practice on Benedict that in spite of his quick wit and his queasy stomach, shall fall in love with Beatrice. If we can do this, Cupid is no longer an archer, for we are the only true love guides, and his glory shall be ours. Come, let me tell you of my drift. There's no way this is going to work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She'll marry the daughter of Leonardo. Yea, my lady, but I can cross it. Any bar, any cross, any impediment will be medicinable unto me. I'm sick in just pleasure to him, and whatsoever comes athwart his affection rages evenly with mine. How canst thou cross this marriage? Not honestly, my lady, but so covertly, no dishonesty shall appear in me. Show me briefly how. I think I told your ladyship a year since how much I am in the favor of Margaret, the waiting gentlewoman on Hero. I remember. I can, at any unseasonable instant of the night, appoint her to look out her lady's chamber window. What life is in that to be the death of this marriage? The poison in that lies in you to tell it. Go you to the prince your brother. Tell him that he hath wronged his honor in marrying the renowned Claudio, whose estimation you do mightily hold up to a contaminated stale, such as one's hero. What proof shall I make of that? Proof enough to misuse the prince, vex Claudio, undo hero, and kill Leonardo. Look you for any other issue? Only to despite them, I will endeavor anything. Go then, find me a meet hour to draw Don Pedro on the Count Claudio alone. Tell them that you know the hero loves me. Intend to kind of zeal to them both that you have discovered thus. Scarcely believe this without trial. Offer them instances. Show bear no less likelihood than to see me at her chamber window. Hear me call Margaret hero. Hear Margaret turn me baraccio. And in the meantime, I will so fashion the matter that the hero shall be absent. There shall appear such seeming truth of this, that jealousy shall be called assurance, and all the preparation overthrown. <laughs> Grow this to what adverse issue it can. I will put it in practice. Be cunning in the work of this, and thy fee is a thousand dollars. Be you constant in your accusation. My cunning shall not shame me. I will presently go learn the day of marriage.
too much wonder that one man, seeing how much another man is a fool when he dedicates his behaviors to love. Well, after he had laughed at such shallow follies in others becoming the argument of his own scorn by falling in love, such a man is Claudio. May I be so converted and see with these eyes? Rich, she shall be that certain. Wise or I'll not. Virtuous? Or I'll never cheap her. Fair or I'll never look on her. Mild or come not near me. Good discourse, an excellent musician. And her hair, be whatever color it please God. The prince, wants your love. Come hither, Leonardo! What was it you told me of today? That your niece, Beatrice, was in love with Signor Benedict? Oh, I, I didn't ever think that lady would love any man. Oh, not I neither, my lords, but most fortunate that she would choose to dote on Signor Benedict, whom she hath in all outward behavior seemed ever to abhor. Is what would awesome? What fits of passion shows she? Well, she'll she'll sit you down. She will. My daughter told you how. You remember, Claudia? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Hero told me. Yes. She will. She will sit you down once a night and write a beautiful, huge, long sonnet all about Benedict. Oh, that's right, that's right. And then, and then, and then down upon her knees she'll fall, and she weeps and she sobs and she tears her hair and she says, "Oh, sweet Benedict." God give me patience. <laughs> As she made her affection known to Benedict. No, and never will, my lord. She swears it. That's her torment. Mm -hmm. It were good that he knew of it by some other, if she will not discover it. Oh, tell what, and he would make but sport of it and just torment the poor lady worse. Hey. She's an excellent sweet lady, and I have all suspicion she is virtuous. Yeah. And she is exceeding wise. Bumble. <laughs> Got it! <laughs> If he do not note under upon this, I will never trust my expectation. Let there be the same net spread for her, and must your gentle daughter and her gentlewoman carry. The sport will be when they hold one opinion of another's dotage and no such matter. That's the scene that I would like to see, which will be merely a dumb show. Let us send her to get him for dinner. <laughs> was sadly born. And had the truth that this from here. I seem to pity the lady. It seems her affections have their full bent. Love me. I must be required. I hear how I am censored. They say that I will bear myself proudly if I perceive the love come from her. They say too that she would rather die than give any sign of affection. Happier they, they can hear their detractions and can put them to mending. They say the lady is fair. Tis truth, I can bear them witness. And virtuous, tis so, I cannot reprove it. And wise, but for loving me, by my troth is no addition to her wit, nor no great argument of her folly, for I will be horribly in love with her. <laughs> I may chance have some odd quirks and remnants of wit broken upon me because I have railed so long against marriage. But doth not the appetite alter? A man loves the meat in his youth and cannot endure in his age. Shall quips and sentences and these paper bullets of the brain awe a man from the career of his humor? No. The world must be people. When I said that I would die a bachelor, I did not think that I shall live till the day that I were married. Here comes Beatrice. By this day, she's a fair lady. I do spy some marks of love in her. <laughs> Against my will, I am bid to come in to dinner. Fair Beatrice. Thank you for your pains. I took no more pains for those thanks than you might take pains to thank me. 
If it had been painful, I would not have come. You take pleasure in the message then. <laughs> yeah, as much as you might take upon the point of a knife. You have no stomach, senor. Fare you well. Ha! Against my will, I am set to bid you come to dinner. There's a double meeting. <laughs> I took no more pains for those things than you took pains to thank me. That's as much to say. Any pains I take for you is as easy as thanks. <laughs> Get it done. Benedict. He is the only man in SoCal 
always accepted, my dear Claudio. Oh, I pray you, madam. Be not angry with me. Speaking my fancy, Senor Bendit, for shape, for bearing, argument, and valor, goes foremost in report through SoCal. He hath an excellent good name. His excellence did earn it ere he had it. What are you married, madam? Why, every day tomorrow. Come, go in. I'll show thee some attire and some counsel. And see which best furnish me tomorrow. Was that Ani DeFranco? Ani DeFranco? <laughs> She's alive. I'll oh, warn you. We have caught her, madam. If it proves so, then loving goes by hacks. Some cupids kill with arrows, some with traps. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 